Oh, boy. Okay. Well, hi, friends. Doc South here. And uh, I've got an awfully long blurb for you. Yeah, this uh, this definitely is a, a doozy, but I've been wanting to write it. And uh, maybe if one day it'll be in one of my books, if you know, if I can. And I thought you might like it. Okay. Uh, it's, yeah, well, it's, it's one of the, well, y you'll see. Okay. Uh, did you bring a coffee? Because this one, yeah, this one's about, oh, 1,900 words. It's going to take a, I know. Mm. Uh, okay. So you set? All right. This is one of my favorite stories. And if you're an actual, you know, face-to-face -face friend of mine, excuse me, my eye itches, you'll, um, uh, oh, yeah, there. Okay. Um, if you're a if, if you run into me in person, you've probably heard me tell this story. I decided to write it down in case one day I, you know, I forget it. Uh, and I, I sure don't want to. It's a fantastic story. You ready? Okay. <laughs> I think you'll like this. I think you will. And it's, it's yeah, well, it's typical Doc South stuff. <laughs> Trust me on that. Let me see here. Okay, I've got it scrolled on the screen here, so it should work out. This one's just called uh, Long Ago at Sonny's Drive-In. And like I said, you're okay, you're in for the duration. Uh, sometimes I'll be driving down the highway, scratching my ear, and this lingering, undying memory from the past sees its chance and once again crawls into my noggin for yet another visit. The memory simply won't go away. Even most, even though most of my memories from 20 years ago have long since vanished, this one hits like a sledgehammer almost every month. It happened long ago, maybe a year or two before the Chatterbox Drive-In even existed. Back then, the place was known as Sonny's Drive-In. Sonny was uh, nice enough to have me uh, as his Saturday night DJ. And like now, I... Uh, I commanded uh, the same general spot in the room and played oldies for the crowd. I didn't have the nice control booth that I have now at the Chatterbox, but at Sonny's, they gave me the use of a good-sized, sturdy table for my equipment. And frankly, that gave me more than enough space. Heck, it was an honor just to be there on Saturdays, and, and I was treated well. I was treated very well. Uh, one night, I was up to, like I am now, uh, one night I was up to my earlobes in doo-wop songs. There was a good-sized crowd on hand. In fact, the place was filled. There were lots of people at the counters ordering milkshakes and chili dogs. Uh, kids were spinning on the stools, you know, those counter stools, like we used to do back in the day. Parents were telling their kids to stop spinning so fast. Of course, like when we were kids, the uh, the demands fell on deaf ears just as soon as the kids look, uh, just as soon as the folks looked away. I noticed three guys standing over near the ice cream freezer. You know where they got the buckets of ice cream? You can look and say, I want that one as for my cone. Yeah. Okay. It looked to me like they were happily enjoying. In fact, that counter, uh, that, I think that freezer is still there. I think it is. Anyway, it looked to me like they were happily enjoying an ice cream cone, this group, these three guys, uh, ice cream cone and a coffee. They, they didn't look like they were going to be staying long, for, and it seemed like standing was just fine with them. They were looking around the place and smiling as they pointed here and there. I think they enjoyed the tunes I was playing. I was going heavy on the group harmony sounds. It seemed like every doo-wop song I played got a thumbs up and a nod from the guy in the middle. I'd acknowledge their nod and look through my 45s for more of the same. Um, heck, like any entertainer would do, I, I figured it best to give the audience, in this case, those three guys, uh, a reason to applaud. Besides, rare and up-tempo doo-wop is some of my favorite stuff, too. You could actually, yeah, the guy in the middle, I'd play a good doo-wop song and he'd go like, yeah, like that. You know, yeah, yeah, it was, it was, kind of, it was nice, yeah. I got lost in my playing and didn't notice one of the three guys making his way over to me. Next thing I know, there he was, standing off to my side, uh, to the side of my table. It was loud in the place. He motioned for me to get a bit closer. The first thing he said was for me to not look over towards the ice cream freezer. Then he told me that the guy on the right who had been in the middle was Robert De Niro. I didn't look, but I said something like, are you sure? The man said, uh, yeah, he looked at me funny. He said, the man told me I could look now, but be careful with my uh, expression because the crowd might go nuts if anyone realizes just who that is over at the counter. The, that said, the guy told me to go ahead and take a look now. 
Uh, so, I, so I looked and looked again. I soon put my foot in my mouth uh, and said to the guy, are you sure that's Robert De Niro? Doesn't look like him to me, but then what do I know? The guy at the counter put his finger, the guy at the counter, uh, the fellow, yeah, was Robert De Niro, evidently. Uh, <laughs> he, wait a minute here. I'm trying to get this thing to work. Hold on. Oh, my. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, the guy at the counter put his finger to his mouth as a signal for me to be cool. While he was doing that, the friend with me said how Mr. De Niro was loving the doo-wop doo I was playing and wondered if he could come over and chat a bit with me. Uh, the deal was I should not let on over the mic who I was talking to, and I should just act like I was talking to any regular Joe. Okay. <laughs> I agreed to the terms, and the guy walked away while I queued up another song. I got lost under the under my uh, DJ table digging for an album I wanted to play, and when I got back on my feet, sure as heck, the guy in the middle was standing behind my table next to my spot. Luckily, my spot was dimly lit. He had his head up in the shadows. I, he was tall enough to do that. Uh, I think the guy knew that for the moment, shadows were his friend. At this point, I, I wished I had seen more De Niro movies. The more I looked, it, it finally hit me, though, that I was talking to the real deal. We both put our hands out at the same time for a handshake. The nice thing was that he was just as happy to see me as I was honored to see him. Right off the bat, I had to confess that I hadn't seen every one, every one of his movies. The ones I did see, though, were great. In fact, I told him how my favorites, besides The Godfather, was that one he did about the Bronx where he was a, a dad and a bus driver. I couldn't think of the title. <laughs> I couldn't. I felt kind of bad at my ignorance and mumbled how whatever the name was, it was a great movie. I may have said something about how it was a, a gangster movie with heart. I, I think it was. He let me off the hook uh, and said the movie was called The Bronx Tale. Then he, uh, then his head went low between his shoulders like as he glanced from side to side and said something like, let me see if I can do it. He went, yeah, that was a good movie. Like that. Yeah, yeah. He, I said something like how, it was, uh, how that was a great old bus he drove in the movie. He thought that bus looked, uh, would look great parked outside the uh, Sonny's drive-in. I agreed, saying how it would be the perfect. It would be perfect for outside dining. If a driver could be found for it, we could even have some guy drive it around the drive-in as the passengers ate their uh, cheeseburgers. You know, little box lunches on their lap. It could be sort of like a tour bus on cruise night. <laughs> I don't know. We laughed about that. He, uh, the topic switched over to my boxes of records. I had plenty of vinyl 45s and 33s. CDs were still foreign to me. I think he liked that I mostly had vinyl. I'm not sure but if I offered him the chance to thumb through one of my cardboard boxes of 45s to see if there were any he'd like to hear. There were some doozies in those old cheese boxes, uh, cardboard cheese boxes. Uh, we talked doo-wop a bit. He wondered what else I did for a living. Back then, I had a large secondhand store and uh, hosted a nice show at a local radio station. For my part, I wondered why he was up in uh, Sussex County. It seems that uh, he and his friends were uh, were looking for loca for some locations for a movie in the works. I never found out what the movie was, and heaven knows if it even got filmed. Uh, the guy saw the restaurant and had to drop in. To this day, I gotta say, I often wonder if Sonny's Drive-In was in uh, if Sonny's Drive-In was what they were actually looking at. God knows, depending on the script, it was a perfect location for any movie based on the 50s and 60s. Having lived in those days myself, it seemed to be a perfect match to, to all those drive-in hangouts that were once on the outskirts of almost every town nationwide. Uh, we talked a bit more and something cool happened. No, really, this was the coolest thing ever. Mr. De Niro asked how I was doing. I told him how things were going okay, but I guess that I could somehow be doing better. He, he stopped me right in my tracks, right in my tracks with a quick, wait a minute, let's talk this out. What do you mean you could be doing better? <laughs> I looked up from my turntable and had to think a second or two. Well, I'm always broke. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I just think I could be doing better financially. Other folks always seem to have more than I'll ever have. Uh, I didn't get the chance to go one bit further. Mr. De Niro took the floor. <laughs> he said something about how we were going to have to take stock of my situation. He wanted to add things up. The first question uh, out of his mouth, the first question was if I had my health. 
I told him that a while back I had some issues with my heart, but now all was well. In fact, uh, my health was great. To that, he, to that he replied, so you got your health. That's worth a million bucks. Do you have good friends? I told him how I had lots of very good friends. He wanted to know how many. I had to think. Now, he didn't want to hear about the phony friends or mere hangers-on. He said how they didn't count. I, I, I was to think about the real deals in my life. He said that each true friend was worth a million bucks. I had to think a bit and went over the question in my head. While I was thinking, he had the look that just trying to add up some of the good friends in your life was worth a couple of grand just because it was fun to think about it. I had to agree. Each time I hit on yet another friend, I felt at least a couple of grand richer. It was like finding a it was like finding thousand dollar bills in the parking lot. I finally came up with a figure of about twenty five friends over the lifetime, give or take. He said, "How well that came out to twenty five million, uh, a, a million, twenty five times a million each." He saw I was smiling and moved on. He wanted to know if my wife and the kids loved me. I said, they certainly did, just as much as I loved them. Bingo, another million fell right into my lap. <laughs> he said he was pretty sure he knew the answer to this next and last question, but he had to ask it. If nothing else, just to make a point, he wanted to know if I enjoyed the work I do. To that, I said, yeah, I love playing the oldies and keeping them alive. The store drove me nuts, but I enjoyed the treasure hunt it was. The radio station gave me a chance to make a lot of people happy. Yeah, I loved what I do. In fact, I was very happy at work. Uh, <laughs> we, we had a hard time adding up all the millions of my net worth. Well, you know, there's a lot of math there. Uh, in fact, we gave up on the project. Uh, yeah. The deal was that in the real game of life, I was a regular daddy warbucks. Uh, we both started laughing when I told him how I wasn't sure that I had enough money for gas to get home. Uh, he said how he'd, he'd foot me the money, but he didn't have enough cash in his pockets to pay for the ice cream and coffee. Uh, his friends were uh, were going to have to shell out. There we were, two cash-strapped millionaires. Uh, <laughs> the laughing at our predicament uh, was worth at least a few G's. Some of the diners were looking us over and elbowing each other and pointing our way. It, it was time for my guests to beat feet. We shook hands. He asked if I had a card. I didn't. Couldn't afford them. He said that was okay. Out he went. Uh, the next day, I had my people call his people. You know how that goes. We never met again. But it was fun. Uh, it was a it was a fun ten minutes, and I figure it was worth. Uh, if I figure it right, it was worth at least a million, huh? Yeah, I know. God, my it was, and that's a true story. Absolutely true. I swear. I yeah, you'd. Uh, uh, it, it was a blast. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, that's uh, that's it for today. Uh, we'll catch you. Well, catch. We'll try to knock one out tomorrow. Okay. Anyway, thank you, and we'll see you later. Bye now. Oh, and God bless, friends. Of course.